my name is Sergi, and today I will show you something. And for me, it's really, I'm really pleasant to be here because I'm very first time serving tea for someone in Germany. Maybe some of you know I was started in Russia, but I'm originally Georgian, but I'm raised in Moscow. And around 13 years ago, I started traveling a lot. I spent most of my time in China, and I wrote this book. You can also browse it, A Geography of Chinese Tea. It's uh, kind of my contribution and also the, my path around tea. And uh, around three years ago, we started a project in Amsterdam and I always almost moved uh, to Amsterdam and uh, we have idea on making kind of tea houses and experience of tea house that I already have before. And also in last couple of years, I'm after researching around tea and around uh, uh, tea production in China, I was very, I started being very interested to do something by myself. Two years ago, we started two projects. One is uh, in Georgia, and one is in Thailand. And so we have uh, two Thailand, Thailand, yeah. And we have two our own uh, tea factories, one in Georgia, one in Thailand. We also try teas from there today. Yeah, oh, yeah. We, I will adapt my style today. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's okay. I just I just start my doing thing. But uh, if you have any questions, it's just a very informal meeting. Just free, feel free to ask. We can. I just uh, want to say what we will drink today. It will be a lot of different teas. It will be kind of uh, tea journey around the world. Because yeah, I brought uh, some tea from Nepal, Georgia, Thailand, China, Japan. Taiwan and uh, even some more I don't remember so uh, it will be very different uh, and maybe for some of these will be like special for you maybe you even didn't try it yet but yeah uh, we'll try not to drink too much but each of tea like two three cups we will try uh, yeah so yeah so it will be the interesting journey uh, as I regularly do and we will start from tea from Nepal uh, the one it's from my friend actually he around three years ago sent me a sample of Shen Puer. he called emerald green uh, so it's like very very light uh, Shen like tea uh, but actually it's already a little bit how to say aged how we can call the yeah 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 I can also yeah show for you to, to look uh, it's not, not stronger it's just a very light tea for very beginning and uh, we will try also i didn't drink it for two years i, I only tried it when i just received it i can give it just you know, a brew from yeah, here i don't know if you ever heard about tea from nepal <laughs> yeah, yeah actually yeah, nepal the nice. nepal tea uh, plantations uh, interesting in the elevation mostly because it's some of them located around 3000 meters above sea level and also but uh, these uh, plantations very close to Indian Darjeeling also and this is why it became popular there and uh, and but it's not uh, actually I never was there personally sadly uh, but I have a lot of friends who have factories there and do some experience and also used to live there even uh, yeah so I get this sample and today I had an idea because Berlin may be similar for me, uh, like any big European capital, is like a popuri of all cultures came together, especially in Amsterdam, we have this experience. And I just decided to make also kind of travel around the world today, uh, like a special of them to have a tea from different regions. Yeah, so yeah, I will, I will give you my Gondal Bay. You can just take a tea for yourself. Anna, what is your cup? This one is very, very light and uh, for my taste, uh, actually, tea from any region have its own note uh, because we have we can have even the same culture and the same technology or similar technology, but still we have a very different uh, soil and also climate, yeah. air, of course, yeah, and uh, uh, and mostly even technology. If you try to do like the same like in China, because now a lot of Nepalese uh, manufacturers and Indian manufacturers will slowly begin uh, being integrated in Chinese uh, influence around uh, tea technology and tea production. Because actually it's most uh, 
uh, how to say, it's mostly, it fits any tea plantation, doesn't matter where it, where it find. For example, in Georgia, we also have Chinese machinery and in Kenya, we have Chinese machinery uh, because they have better experience possible around the tea production. Also, of course, Japan, but Japan mostly focused on green tea. Uh, but if you talk about uh, fermented tea, like black teas and some other humcha or red tea, how we call it in Chinese, uh, it mostly, of course, came from China, the same as ulum production, ulum processing. Yeah, so it's... But it was a chunk of it, right? Yeah, it's kind of... Yeah, it's, it's a kind of greeny shine how he call it. His idea, uh, the technologist, uh, the guy, he said that his idea was to make something which uh, really uh, looks like uh, something in the middle between green and shen. So it can be aged, but it's still like a green tea. But from my personal experience, what I see that it maybe must be more shen than green. In this case, it will be more, uh, even better uh, in taste for my personal feeling. But uh, yeah, it's just a try out. Uh, maybe a second cup and we will switch to next tea because I want to share a lot of different varieties. Yeah, they don't drink too much tea actually, but they, they have to say they are focused uh, mostly on production, but it's not also uh, not very big amount of production in Nepal. Uh, but I'm not very familiar with uh, because I, as I already said, I never was in Nepal and I, I used to live in China for long, but not there. And, but uh, what I know from my friends that uh, they, uh, from some point they copy the Indian style. Uh, so we try to do something like Indians do. Uh, but now more and more uh, they start being influenced also by China. This is why we have uh, some uh, companies who bring the tea from, uh, from tea machinery from China. This is why we also do something like uh, uh, Chinese tea, uh, similar to Chinese tea. So, uh, and this guy actually, uh, he also do a lot of experimenting uh, around tea. And uh, this is why actually this tea is from stone. This is why I use it for any tea, because regularly if you use uh, uh, pottery, pottery, it's better to use different, uh, different type of uh, clays yeah, for different teapots and, and, and uh, yeah. Jade. This yeah. is made from jade. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just yeah. stopped some. Yeah. Oh, wow. And the other is the strongest stone, so I can see there are like a little too small details. It's like really close. Yeah, but looking at the hips, it looks uh, also how you, uh, yeah, how you handle it. Mm -hmm. Holding with your thumb on the sides. So I'm carrying my car, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, this is why, yeah, it's only one. This tea will be absolutely different. It will be uh, red tea from China. It's called uh, uh, Dashi Zhongguhun, or Dashi, it's mean, or it's name of a place, actually the village in uh, Fengxin County in China, uh, Yunnan province. And uh, Zhongguhun uh, liter literally can be translated like a Chinese red, very easy name, but uh, they call it like like a honor like of China, like Zhongguo. Zhongguo it's like Ch Chinese, China in Chinese, of course, so the name of the country. And Hun, it's red. So Zhongguo Hun, it's Chinese red. It's not very uh, often uh, we can see this tea. Uh, actually, uh, it's not very popular abroad. I don't know why, but uh, maybe you know uh, tea Dianhong. Dianhong, it's a very common uh, name. Uh, very popular tea actually in China and in, in the four foreign countries also. Uh, Yunnan black tea, one of the most famous, like uh, it's uh, Hong. And this you can have a look. Uh, this one is. Uh, so this is more from the south? Of uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it's from the south. Actually, all of the tea, let me show in the book. You can also have a look. I have a small map. This is geography of famous Chinese teas. And this is not a map of China, it's a map of Chinese tea regions. So we have uh, actually Sichuan province, Yunnan province, Guizhou, Guangxi, uh, Guangzhou, Guangdong, uh, Hunan, Jiangxi, Fujian, Zhejiang, Anhui, Hubei, Henan, Jiangsu, and Taiwan Island. Yeah, so here uh, we have like a mostly, uh, mostly you can find the tea in Yunnan, Guizhou, Guangxi, uh, Guangdong, and Fujian. This is like the most in amount 
Also Sichuan, but only small southern part. Uh, also a lot of tea in Hunan province, but actually all of these provinces do tea, but uh, northern less in amount uh, and mostly focused on green tea. But so often more. Actually, Yunnan, Yunnan pro province is uh, like a motherland of tea because uh, in this place, the same as uh, in the northern Vietnam, Burma, Laos, uh, Thailand, uh, also the same region, northern territories of these countries, they uh, have a borders with China, with Guangxi province and with uh, Yunnan province. And uh, there you can find a lot of teas uh, which really like uh, similar to Chinese, uh, like tea trees, Assamic tea trees. But uh, now, uh, still, uh, China produces much more. Uh, maybe only Vietnam can compete at some point, and northern Vietnam produces a lot of tea. Uh, but Laos, Burma, because it's pretty poor countries, they not uh, do a lot, not do a big amount. And even Thailand, because uh, they were not focused on tea for years, only in the end of uh, uh, 20th century, they begin to make some tea. Uh, they begin to create a kind of tea market or something. But uh, it was also made uh, by Chinese who, who uh, go to Thailand uh, because of the uh, revolution in, in mainland China. And they uh, traveled, uh, like so part of them go to Taiwan, part of them uh, go to other countries uh, and a lot of them go to uh, Northern Thailand. And in Northern Thailand now we have uh, actually a few villages, even few regions where there's mostly Chinese living. So it's interesting. Um, Taiwan also has a small production, yeah? Mm. Just the land. Actually, actually not too small. Uh, there is a big county, Nanto, which mostly focused on tea. And also high mountain areas uh, like Alishan, Lishan, uh, yeah. They have a lot of uh, tea also, but uh, Taiwan also re-export a lot of tea. So they uh, do tea by order in Vietnam, in China, in Thai, Thailand, Taiwan actually. And they also resell it because they know better marketing. <laughs> yeah, so the same as uh, some Japanese companies do with matcha and yeah. I haven't met a lot of Taiwan teas, Taiwanese teas, but they were good. I yeah, 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 yeah. We will try today also because they actually don't have this uh, stopover with the uh, uh, culture development, how it was in China during the Cultural Revolution and some other, uh, how to say, difficult periods of history in China. And uh, but uh, Taiwan was kind of, you know, it was a source of uh, real uh, tradition for modern China because as soon as China became slowly reopened after the Xiaoping reforms it was uh, in the end of 70s and uh, from there uh, step by step uh, the Taiwanese companies came to, to mainland China and uh, they actually developed the modern Chinese tea culture it was really made by them. Uh, is it? Almost like, uh, like Ulu. Yeah, it's a little bit because uh, the, they have a kind of uh, processing uh, during fermenting, pretty delicate. So they ferment it uh, not as strong as regular black tea can be fermented. So this is a little bit special. This honey tea is really special for the uh, yeah. Um, yeah, for Ulu. bluish green teas. Yeah. Yeah, this one is uh, like, uh, for, for my personal taste, is one of the most classical tastes of black or red tea, how we call it. And uh, I believe that uh, also one of the most, uh, maybe, how to say, fragrant and aromatic, it's really rich in taste. Uh, because some, some teas is more delicate, but all your 90s are intense, they're very intense taste, like puyers, like uh, you nine white teas, you nine, you nine red teas or black teas, so it's all like... Yeah, we still have a little here, uh, yeah, if you like more. And uh, I will... I don't want... Maybe I take a smaller pot, because not too many of us to don't... Yeah, yeah, yeah it's better. <laughs> so it has a glaze 
dot <laughs> on the exit of hi hi nice to meet you welcome nice to meet you. you can choose your cup I'm ah you're ready ah you're yeah, ready. I, I got the pickle yeah okay 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 okay, 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 okay. <laughs> but if you like uh, prefer more of this you can smaller you can have smaller worth also okay so how if you if you came so we just try we're now trying only second tea so you're not not late so we have kind of uh, uh, tea journey around the world and we will try teas from different regions and now we're trying a tea from China it's Yunnan uh, tea, Yunnan black tea or Chinese call it red tea mm -hmm. it's called Zhongo Hong or Chinese red uh, very easy to remember <laughs> yeah so I will share with you Gundao Bay this vessel so you can easily fill it with a tea by yourself and try it's really like more long than red one yeah it's, it's a really strong taste yeah 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 it's a, and it's a good along like. yeah 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 actually i put really like a lot <laughs> but but it's also it's also even if you put lo lower amount it's still like very light uh difficult to make it light actually <laughs> Yeah, so the next tea we will try. I love this tea. Yeah, this one, yeah, it's from Jade. You can, you, can, you can have a look if you like. Yeah. It's um, uh, from Taiwan, actually, from Hualian uh, city. Uh, it's a city on the west, uh, on the east of Thailand. Uh, actually, yeah, of course. There was a lot of earthquakes, and, and I also was uh, there actually once during the earthquake, so it was a uh, yeah, very, how to say, impressive thing. So, and the next tea we try, uh, it will be tea from Georgia, because uh, I'm start talking about Georgia, and it will be Georgian black or red tea. Uh, it will be also, I believe, interesting to try, something special. It's made on our own factory. Uh, this year we finally just uh, start the fire for full operation of the factory. The third tea will be from Georgia. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we, we will fill it uh, the difference, I think, in maybe 40 minutes after six, seven types. But regularly, I do, depending on the occasion, uh, we can try up to 30 times. <laughs> but uh, we will look. Yeah, so this is a uh, tea from Georgia. Uh, it's red tea or black tea, but it was a technology. Uh, we use a Chinese uh, traditional technology of uh, Gun Fu Hun Cha. It's a Fujian uh, province uh, technology, and we just uh, have a book from university uh, in Chinese, and I especially translate some paragraph of this book uh, for. Uh, our employees uh, on Georgian factory, so we just follow the Chinese uh, guidelines. It also doesn't smell like a normal. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, it's something special. It's something yes, special. It's uh, all the teas we try today is not uh, common types at all, because uh, the common teas you can find. <laughs> I, my, my challenge for myself all the time was like to make something completely different from anything and uh, in, with tea actually it's uh, really possible uh, you can try this is Georgian tea Anna there's your cup uh, yeah mm -hmm. do the people in Georgia drink a lot of tea not at all actually the Georgian tea tradition also very interesting it became in uh, also in Russia in Empire of Russia times end of uh, 19th century and uh, some uh, Russian traders, uh, like a big uh, families of uh, businessmen who do tea in Russia, and they just uh, established some first estates. And they invited uh, a family uh, from China uh, who started uh, like all the process uh, from zero. Like they just, from the very beginning, they just bring the bushes and start growing it in Georgia. And in the beginning of the uh, 20th century, there was already a pretty big amount of production. And uh, there is a very famous uh, photos of 
a uh, famous photographer, Praskudin Gorsky, maybe you've seen it. It's a very famous photographer who traveled across the Russian Empire and he made a squatter photography of all the traditions uh, from all around the Russian Empire, from Finland to, you know, to Sahalin Island, something like so. It's very interesting. And he also, and it, it's a very, very beginning of 20th century, uh, around uh, more than 100 years ago, 120 years ago, maybe. Uh, so, yeah, and he also made a photography of Chakri. Chakri, it's a small village in Georgia, present is uh, Georgia, independent country, and they have a kind of uh, uh, ladies, uh, Georgian ladies, who, who pick up the leaves uh, and who have his, they stay in the baskets the same like in China, so it was very uncommon view for this region because actually Georgia never produced tea before, but now uh, also during Soviet times they make some efforts but uh, because of some, how do you say, Soviet guidelines, like make it all like, uh, only like, was care only about amount, not about the quality. And uh, during the Soviet period, uh, till the end of 80s, it was big amount of tea produ production, very huge, it was in Georgia, but uh, the quality was very low because they make crops like that and make, uh, we even don't call it tea, we call it like tea product. And they bring some tea from India and make some blends to make it a little bit better. But uh, the main problem was uh, the technology. And now some enthusiasts uh, in the beginning of 90s after Georgia became ind independent, uh, some enthusiasts start to do tea uh, more, how to say, more sophisticated way, you know. So we start uh, to produce uh, a tea uh, under the guidelines of uh, China, Japanese technology and so on. And they step by step, uh, uh, build this uh, tea tradition what now existing in Georgia and they have pretty good uh, pretty good quality tea also not only we manufacture but around 30 uh, small and big uh, factories do Georgian tea now and uh, I believe that one of the most uh, beneficial thing that the soil in Georgia is very good and also it's very clean they mostly don't use any pesticides at all because it's pretty cold there and uh, during the winter there's also frost sometimes even and uh, this is why not so many bugs not so much as in china or india or kenya so we don't need uh, herbicides and pesticides so mostly we cut manually uh, all the unneeded uh, grass whatever as we do in our own field also uh, so yeah it's pretty interesting also depends um, yeah. how how healthy the soil is, right? That you don't need fertilizers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, actually, it mostly uh, not about the soil itself. It mostly also about the climate, yeah. because if it's not too hot, so it's colder than in most of the regions uh, uh, where tea harvested. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is why in Georgia they just they just don't have too much bugs which eat the leaves, for example, and uh, don't have too much uh, other grass which can like. Uh, uh, which you need to cut uh, between the, uh, uh, it's called spalera in Russian, but I don't know how it's in, in Chinese, it's like uh, tea bushes, but uh, cha, cha, cha yuan, but I don't know how it's in English. <laughs> yeah, but still uh, there is a, yeah, much less, they use sometimes, some farmers use it, but uh, because they focused on European market now a lot and uh, some big French companies buy Georgian tea and German also, and also we produce and we try to export to Amsterdam, to our Dutch company. And uh, so it, they are trying to fit the regulations, which is pretty strict here. And this is why we don't do that uh, often. So you can try this is Georgian black tea. Yeah, yeah. I like this, chocolate. Yeah, thank you, this, thank you. This bitter, sweet, yeah, yeah. chocolate. The main thing, all the teas which we try today have no artificial addings at all. It's only tea. No any flavoring, no even flowers, whatever, just tea. Yeah, this is uh, this year we made uh, only a few hundred kilos of this tea. Uh, maybe next year we do a little bit more, but each uh, time it, it's different because we have uh, only small rollers now. We bring more machinery in August, uh, late August, and uh, uh, we made each bunch like 50 kilo, and each time is different taste. And um, uh, some of the big companies, they often mix these uh, teas because you have like 
too much assortment, so too big assortment, and we just do, okay, let's mix all of it and it will be one type. But we keep it separate. So we have like ginger one, two, three, four, five, ten, twelve, whatever, and it's like uh, all the time something a little bit different. It's like a, ch a Chinese um, culture, no? Yeah. So our <laughs> yeah, our, our Sansu, Wulu Chi Bayu. You can show Hanya. Indian, ah, not really. Okay, so Hanyu Jens is there. Well, Hanyu is Indian. Uh, since I went, I just think that my Chinese, I forgot a little bit because uh, sun and uh, three years I not traveled to China. But but luckily on the north of Tha Thailand, uh, I found Chinese people. So this is like. So, do you want some, someone more of this tea? Or we, this one is nice. Yeah, I will brew one more of this. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I just uh, because. It reminds me on a, on an Arishan I bought uh -huh. some years ago. Uh -huh. um, that was really sweet and it also was a wood top. Uh -huh. And it also had these dark chocolate flavor. Uh -huh. I have a, maybe caramel a little bit, something like that, but yeah. I have the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Honey. Uh -huh. So honey? the second infusion more, um, was like more honey or linden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. okay, you can take more of it. It still can be brewed, we can brew more infusions, but I want to switch to the next one because I have a lot of different teas. I want you to introduce to some of my, my collection. Yeah, so, yeah, here we have. How many times you can put on hot water on this tea? Like, uh, Ah, how many steps? Uh, it, it, it can be up to 8, 10 something. Yeah, but it depends on the type. Uh, this Georgian is pretty strong uh, because it's also like, um, we call it partially wild tea. Why? Because um, we have a kind of uh, uh, abandoned uh, old Soviet uh, plantation. And this uh, plantation for around 40 years, no one, not even fertilized, we even don't harvest tea. They just uh, it, it's actually there was a kind of forest with trees like that so we need to cut these trees and there are still existing the bushes tea bushes between these trees and we just cut the bushes also because it was like three meters high so difficult to harvest some of them we leave it like that to make it like wild tea something but for a month we still need to also cut the crops to this height maybe like that yeah so uh, I have on my channel a documentary about uh, our plantation. Uh, hopefully, it will be mm, done uh, in in the end of August. We will make a final editing. <laughs> uh, I filmed it this year, a big uh, story about this. Actually, I'm also a blogger. If you don't know, there is a, in a book, there is a QR codes. All these QR codes leads to the YouTube channel, uh, so you can find uh, all the videos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when I made my first matcha by your uh, guidance, yeah, yeah, yeah. I drink it in the morning and uh, with empty stomach. Uh -huh. And it, <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was too strong. <laughs> but yeah, a, friend, yeah. a friend already told me, she's a Russian who often buys from Mojai, uh -huh. and she already told me he's always making strong tea. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. This yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, it's, like don't really listen to me, reduce. don't listen to me. <laughs> I will, I'm all the time trying to make it stronger. But also, I can explain why I brew really strong, because I need to try the tea. And most of the time I drink in tea, I just try new types, and I want to find out uh, which, uh, time is, which type is better or not. So I need to choose, actually, to select something. And uh, this is why yeah, I just uh, focus on strong brewing. Don't look at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, the next tea uh, will be also. Oh wow, wonderful! We have this magic vessel because I use this one, but it's not this. It's actually <laughs> from Papua New Guinea. I use it for uh, bring um, baking uh, tea cakes, but for teapots it's not very <laughs> common instrument. But actually, it can be a good weapon. Though. Dangerous. Yeah, it looks dangerous, but it's actually it's, it was a weapon. It was a weapon, but yeah, uh, yeah but uh, yeah. So the next tea it's uh, it's from Thailand, and uh, uh, this is uh, oh I have very last most 
actually last, uh, no, still, we still have some. This is a oolong from, uh, and there is a little bit dusty because it's, it's the end of the tea. Uh, so this is a aged oolong around uh, seven years from Thailand and uh, from my Salong village. I only have this, had this sample, uh, but this is also pretty interesting because uh, it's really different from Chinese oolong and from uh, Taiwanese oolong also. Uh, but I do believe that it's a very good one. Uh, I like it. It's like uh, not very old because you know, like aged oolongs like old Lao Cha or uh, how to say Lao Cha Wan, also some people call it uh, like aged teas. Uh, but it's like in the middle of its way, I do believe. Do you have Gaba oolong? Yeah, they have. They have. We oh, have. Some sort, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, have Shu yeah, yeah. Gaba. They will even try today. They will even try today. May I have this uh, vessel? It's still empty? Gondobe? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, wonderful. So, yeah. So this is uh, the, the Oolong, aged Oolong from Thailand. Welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I also brew it strong. Sorry. Uh. Uh, also, we know why it's strong because um, there was a lot of dust. It uh, it's still I have a it's yeah. So if it's too strong for you, just don't drink it too much. Smaller cup. Also later I bring some sweets, natural sweets, but not now. Uh, maybe two two teas later. Yeah, I have more. I, I have more. I will, I will give me this. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. As I told, as I promised, today we will focus on on very special tastes. It will be not the common experience. But you are known for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> ah. You want to write kind of... Uh, yeah. Wow, let's do that. Okay, I will take my phone in this case. Uh, so first was uh, uh, Nepal... Nepal... Uh, green Shen. Something. The second was... Uh, the second was... What was the second? I forgot. Uh, the second ah, Jungo Hong. Jungo Hong. There was a, was a red. It was a red, like, but like Hulu. Yeah, <laughs> don't go home. The third is a uh, Georgian red. Mm -hmm. Georgian wild red. Mm. Wild red tea. And, uh, and, now and the fourth is a uh, uh, Thailand uh, aged. All on. Yeah, good. I like how we go pretty fast. M maybe. So I do the last step. Actually, all teas can be brewed longer, like up to 10. We can drink one tea all the time, but uh, I want just to, to show something different. How is it for the summer? For the summer, it's usually uh, to use light. Yeah, yeah. During this time, I really recommend maybe white, green, and not uh, too fermented teas, but Suddenly, I don't have too much of those with me, <laughs> but uh, we, will maybe, maybe, <laughs> we will maybe try something. Um, yeah, so the next tea, because we start to talk about uh, the lighter ones, let it be, let it be Zizuan, Zizuan Cha. It means uh, the purple, purple tea from Yunnan province. It's also a Chinese one. Uh, Purple, purple. Oh. So it's yes, a little like Zhuan um, uh, Cha. Yeah, it's from 2021, uh, and it's also Yu Ji Cha. It means like it's organic one. Uh, yeah. So 
how we go where we go we go now we go now to the next one it's really for me it's speedy to throw it away we can still brew it but but let us the same for me, I'm just looking. Yeah, 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 but... Uh, but you're drinking all the things that are done. We can drink from here later on. Yeah. <laughs> it will be a copper-like tea, because this one is also very special type, uh, because it's also a new cultivar. This uh, Zizuan cultivar is, uh, was developed only around uh, 30 years ago, something, and uh, uh, it became popular in Yunnan province and now also some Kenyan manufacturers also grow this uh, type of purple tea. Uh, so yeah, it's really uncommon uh, type. Yeah, let it be. Hope it's not too much. <laughs> okay. Is it smoking, sir? No. It's just, it's just the tea, only tea. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the technology of production. It's the same as the Shen Puer, okay. but the only difference is a cultivar. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, uh, it's really uh, even looks like a purple, purple buds. So it's very, very different from most of teas you can find, uh, and uh, even by appearance. But the technology is the same like Shen Puer. So. Now you can slowly flow into a tea state. <laughs> different, yeah, it's like... It's completely different from ours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, if, you, if you're looking at the leaves, you didn't expect that. Even when it smelled the leaves, you didn't expect that smell later. You can also smell the pot, uh, the leaves itself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, where does this tea come from? It's China. It's China, Yunnan province, uh, Manhai County. Oh, yeah, okay. so it's... Soft. Yeah. Soft, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I have to make this short reel for later. <laughs> so, just continue. Okay. Maybe this uh, infusions is enough for this one, or try, or try the next. Uh, it will be different a little, so we'll try the third one too, yeah, and uh, it will be last. So yeah, as soon as we get the pot back. I've never been a, a, a friend of Shangpuer. Uh -huh. But uh, since I found uh, the Badashan region, uh -huh. um, this is I, I cannot understand what's so different between Badashan and the rest, and also this mm -hmm. climate is very mm -hmm. interesting. Actually, the main uh, difference not in regions but in technology, uh, and and also the age of tree. Because, for example, if we take the plantation Shenpur or from old trees, it will be really different. And also, the old trees can be vary from like 50 years or 100 years or 300 years or thousand years. You know, it's all. It's just about to finish. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, not. It's it's different, but uh, mostly it depends on the on the processing on the right. Uh, roaster, mm. how we can call it, and uh, uh, this is a guy who do that, do it manually, and do it really good level. He can even use like xiao shu, small trees material, and do perfect shampoo. Mm. But if no gung fu, no knowledge about the technology, doesn't matter what kind of material, you can spoil any material. So this is why, yeah. So and now uh, they have a lot of new machinery which is pretty interesting. They do kind of the same work what we have uh, for uh, handmade roasting, but it's, it's, it's cycling, like, like a, it's mechanical cycling, but also use a wood for it, the same. And uh, so it's a machine, but they do absolutely similar thing what we do by hand. So if you, you know how to use a machine, you can do really no worse quality. Uh, this machine was developed not so long time ago. Actually, after COVID, they became more popular. I never seen that in Rio, in China, but I seen them in Taiwan, in Thailand. Mm. 
and we want to buy the same one machine for us. We will look how it's, I don't know how it will look like later. Anna Yoka. Uh, yeah. So you can try the third infusion. Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of a special one. Yeah, and now you can see that the uh, colors, uh, I will also put a little bit of leaves. Here you can lo look a closer look of what's a little bit uh, purple color, even in leaves here, you can see it. Even after all this processing and roasting and sun drying, you still see it. And it's different appearance comparing to Shenpuer. Yeah, so we will not do for for fusion, okay? So I think it's enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think you have to explore it at home. Yeah. <laughs> so I was trying to to um, order something from Neuchai, Russia, ah, ah. but it wasn't. It's impossible. Yeah. You can oh, you can order from Amsterdam. Amsterdam yeah, is. But they do not have this smoking powder. Ah. So looking for this uh, Xiangdao. Ah, Xiangdao. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Do you have Sagan Dala in Amsterdam? Yeah, we have, we have, we have, we have. Mm -hmm. We have. We have. We have. What? Really? Wine? Uh, it's just one of the one. I mean, maybe I, I, I don't. I'm not sure. It's uh, but you can write. Yeah, yeah, alright. Well, we will, uh -huh. we will manage. <laughs> Yeah, it's also also in Russia. It was not so uh, much often available as I've seen. Yeah, but it, it mostly is sold out very quickly. Yeah, because it's not <laughs> only if you even in Russia, like by airport, by bike house. Uh, I have one small, uh, how to say, exhibition. It's a uh, European Lao Cha. This is a Chinese tea which was imported to Netherlands in the fifties. Yeah, and it's a uh, black tea. I don't open it yet, but I just want to show because it's interesting to look. And this one, uh, I do believe it's also a very big uh, company from Netherlands. And this is, uh, I believe that it's a Rotterdam company which bring tea from India, but it's also around 60s. So it's <laughs> just a <laughs> small, uh, interesting piece. I didn't accidentally take a wrong uh, can <laughs> from the collection, yeah. And here, oh, here it's uh, for the end. Do you think when you open this, this will still be tasty? Uh, I think it will be interesting at least, because, <laughs> because actually any, any aged tea is interesting. Yeah, so uh, I even tried like some Turkish tea from 80s. Some people like, oh, what is that? But I found this, you know, as I found this chain way, what Chinese call like aged old, uh, Aged taste in the chain way in Chinese, and this chain way it's like bring you with uh, like very balsamic notes, all these uh, dried fruits notes, mm. and I love it, you know. And uh, even this uh, uh, maybe not so nice notes in, in really, but I love it. So the next tea will be uh, Taiwanese Bao Jun, Bao Jun tea. So it's it's aged. Wow, 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 this one is, oh. <laughs> this one is really good, maybe too good, but <laughs> let it be. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> late. Late. Okay, okay, I already put it here, so, okay, done. <laughs> that's I guess, yeah, uh, okay, no problem. For my first uh, impression in Berlin, let it be, yeah, so this is like, um, uh, it's around 25 years old, and it's naturally, um, it's roasted. And you know, if you talk about uh, Taiwanese uh, Lao Chao, Taiwanese aged tea, often we can find a fake aged tea, how it looks like. We take a fresh oolong and roast it strongly and make kind of hay oolong or black oolong or a dark Taiwanese, how we call it. And, uh, but in Taiwan, we call it like, oh, it's real Lao Cha. But how do you easily find out if it's fake? When you infuse it, it not open up, it still stays like uh, roll it, like in this. Uh, it's faked. When it's faked, because if it's if it's uh, if it's if it's naturally fermented, there's no temperature. It's open up because it's it's just aged for long. It's not roasted. 
for high temperature. And uh, this is why, this is the main difference uh, how to recognize uh, the uh, original aged Taiwanese Baudron and tea. And basically you can then restore the leaf. Yeah, 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 you, 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 yeah, you can see, but uh, also the taste, actually I can recognize it by taste easily. Because uh, even here I actually bought some European suppliers aged uh, Oolong teas like Lao Cha Wan uh, or aged uh, Taiwanese teas. Mostly it was this kind of fake one. Even I sell it, but I just call it Hai Oolong. I just call it, no, I don't call it aged uh, tea. We have like Ansi Hai Tu or uh, this black Oolong from Ansi region. It's very cheap, but taste is good. And some people even, wow, it's great, it's something. Uh, but it's just a regularly roasted old Tiguanin, which not gets to the market. Uh, but it's good, it's good to make it like that and also to save the tea like that, but just it must not be called aged in real. This is even some jasmine uh, I don't know, it's uh, anyone who finds something special, yeah, you can yeah. try the taste. It's, it's uh, uh, This one is wonderful tea. Yeah. One of my favorites. Yeah. This tea is quite interesting. I had an aged oolong from Stefan in there. Uh -huh. I don't know if you know him. The tea don't know. And um, that was 40 years old. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. two years older than me uh, <laughs> at this time. Uh -huh. Now I'm aged again. <laughs> I'm aging like tea. Um, but um, that was very similar, that smell ah. to that. Very similar. So maybe they are choose just 20, not 40? <laughs> but yeah, but I know actually the age, because I bought it around uh, 10 years ago, and at that time it was like 10, 12 years this old. one is smooth, and the others, the 40 years is, have more grip, but uh, both are This is a, yeah, now it's, uh, yeah, it's open up. <laughs> Which bring us a real tea state. <laughs> this tea because of the aging. It's okay. Uh, we will, will we be able to sleep at night today? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> no, I think you will be able if you don't want to sleep at like at like nine. But sleep sleep at midnight is possible. I do believe that okay. four hours. Sleep in the afternoon. Yeah. More. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I like your vibe. Uh, real uh, tea people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just brew some herbal teas. I have yes. calming herbal tea. Do you want it? Actually, also very good, but uh, not for Gunfucha ceremony. Yeah, it's balsamic notes. This is a like my master had this uh, medicine that we started with Gofu. He had this kind of Gofu medicine called Didajo. Uh -huh. And it smells very very similar, so it reminds me of my uh, tea start. Can we not throw out the tea? <laughs> Can we drink it too? Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> we, will, we will save it. We will See, keep it out and uh, in each small bag, uh, each of us, uh, <laughs> you can dry it at home and, double, and double. or make a picture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I, I do believe that we need to share this tea with the ladies there because they're working. Yeah, I, I just uh, brew more because I just don't want to waste it. But at the same time, we want to switch to the next one. Yeah, this, this is a... Uh, I just write it down. It's the last infusion, I believe that maybe it will be... The uh, last infusion of the... Uh, of this aged, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can do more, but I believe it's... Yeah, for me it was just really strong already. Yeah. This is, uh, this is definitely too strong, but... About the strongness, yeah. So, let me share with you my special composition. This is a dried uh, fruits. It's called pastilla in Russian, but you know it's... Pastilla? Yeah, but it's very special pastilla. It's made in uh, 
Чер... Карачаева Черкесия. It's natural without sugar. You can open and uh, yeah, so it's fruit, dried fruits, and it's very good to while well, you're drinking too much tea, it's good to not drink in an on empty stomach. So I this is. It's like that. It's like that. You can make. Ah, it's a slices. <laughs> Yeah. I always buy that. This is better. Try it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. This is good. Yeah. Do you have, do you have cherries? Uh, cherries, we don't have. We have apricot, a plum, and oh. apple. Mm -hmm. Ah, the plum. You can try the plum in this case. Sorry, it's not a plum. Yes. I've been dying to Don't feel. <laughs> this is plum, <laughs> apple, Hmm? And the more I plum know. and apricot. <laughs> so, uh, can I have an apricot, please? Apricot, yeah. This we also have actually in Netherlands <laughs> because we import that. Mm. You don't have cherries at, um, cherry pastel at all? No. With you? We don't have it at all. We only made apricot, apple, and plum. Startup oh. idea, cherry. Uh, cherry, <laughs> it's a little bit more expensive from uh, berry, but um, maybe we will try. This is just a puree of the yeah. fruit, that's it, the right. Yeah. How do you find it? Mm -hmm. huh? yeah? Thank you, thank you. Without sugar. Yeah, without sugar. So it's like natural. Hmm? Yeah, because we have very intense uh, tea tasting today. So, um, I can't throw it away. Yeah? I, I, just, I will keep it, keep it maybe. So the next tea will be also very special <laughs> because we only focus. So we focused on special teas today. It's called Gaba Dali Fosian Cha. Gaba, so yeah, it's. Uh, uh, maybe a little. No, yeah. no, GABA uh, basically is no, has no trophic action, so it will yeah. stimulate a little bit. Uh, no, GABA and cools it down. The, uh, uh, it normalizes side habits. So it's it impossible no to make uh, you down now. <laughs> no, now <laughs> but, it's not possible. Yeah, yeah, now, but, uh, but now trophic will relax more, but yeah. uh, it will be like more psychedelic. Normalize, normalize. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on the doses, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> <coughs> like everything. So, uh, this is Gava Dali for Sian Cha. Uh, what's, how, why it have its name? You can look, we have a little here. Uh, yeah. And so, this is a tea uh, from, also from Yunnan province. And it's located in Yunlun County. A uh, very interesting, interesting place. It's a pretty high mountain area. Around uh, 2500 to 2700 above sea level, very high. And uh, there is a big, big uh, plantation, actually one of the biggest green tea production in China, located there, my good friends. And they have also experimental station. They, they do kind of unusual teas. Uh, so I ordered them to do for me some very strange types. And this is one of these strange ones. <laughs> so it's like, there's a Foxian cultivar, uh, originally came from Fujian, uh, but they grow it in Yunnan province. And they do shampoo from this Fujian cultivar, but they also ferment it a little bit in vacuum. This is why we have this GABA. GABA. Yeah. So, the finally tastes became completely unusual. Uh, so for me, yeah, it's really, really special tea. I really value that. It will be here, like last one because I don't have more. Yeah, so this is like GABA. Ah, yeah, we have it. Once again, this one is... GABA DALI FOSIAN TEA. I'm interested in the tea before. Yeah, I, I will, I will, I will um, uh, post the list on my Instagram. On my Instagram, hopefully. Gaba Dali Foisian Cha. Cha in the end. Mm -hmm.
Uh, chai, gaba da lifojan, it's, it's, it's actually English uh, transliteration, you know, so, so it's... Uh, okay, gaba da li. Gaba da li. <laughs> gaba da li you will find, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gaba from Dali, Dali it's actually also a county in, uh, nearby. Uh, so, Gaba, Dali, Hoshan, Cha. Also, Anna, can you make some photo video for the story? So, yeah. So, the smell. You will feel the smell. It's very really special. Yeah. And it's also aged because it's for almost three years. Um, and uh, oh no no not three years two years and we also later try gaba shoe I'm waiting for that so we will have two gabas today yeah maybe yes. even four I have more but uh, we will have a look if you will be still like feeling power <laughs> to do that uh, ah, hey cha, hey cha, Tiguani. Wow, wow, wow! It's absolutely incredible tea. That was uh, the press ones, like chocolate. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's a uh, it's a tea long from uh, Hunan province, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so it's yeah, it's very special. So uh, the gaba gaba dali. Let it be more of gaba dali. Let us. Did have some from my child, but mm -hmm. I don't remember which one. Yeah, Not this one. Uh -huh. you, you have yeah, it's special. In yeah. The name? yeah, yeah, yeah. You maybe have have. Uh, uh, I guess it was all Taiwanese. Taiwanese. Mostly we have from Taiwan, but now we finally have a lot of from Thailand. Also, actually, the selection of Thailand gaba we will have we already have in in Amsterdam. So it's. And uh, I will brew maybe next one the gaba from. Yeah, you can take this one. So when is the German shop is coming? Ooh, hopefully, maybe next year. But we're preparing the now already second time in Berlin. <laughs> second. Uh, so, so, and I really love the city, and I see that also kind of tea culture developed. There are some tea shops and pretty good tea shops, but not tea houses. Not the houses. Not. I yeah, it was some of them before Corona, but after Corona, they, yeah. They yeah, 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 yeah. So this is like uh, yeah, and I think that if we do something similar to Amsterdam, it will be good or to have here. Because usually I go for tea house, I go to Prague. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have so we few. See each other on the tea festival. Uh, no, no, I don't. Think so. I was. Uh, I have no idea. What? What? What's tea festival? Yes. Yeah, in October. This year, yeah? This year. Yeah, because I subscribed to Instagram, but I just maybe missed it out because uh, this year. Was they plan it, they plan it for beginning of October. And I, but I don't know, they, I heard they implement again these masks uh, for no, so no. Hi, hi, Yannick. No, only nice to meet now, you. at the moment, on the It's in August, it's in the end yeah. of August in the tea yeah. The time here. Right. So, but they have the a cup. lot of tea for yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I have my favorite one. More Gaba Dali for Shanti. <laughs> hey, yeah, but I really, uh, I'm missing all these years in Germany, I'm missing tea houses. Yeah. yeah. Sure, I can order tea from, yeah. Yeah. from Czech Republic or something else. Yeah, yeah. yeah, hopefully we will do, but uh, yeah, it's need time because actually uh, Amsterdam Tea House finally take uh, around more than a million investment. <laughs> so we need more. Oh, yeah, but uh, we will look or we find the local partners or are they do by ourselves, it depends. Uh, but still, this is why we need to more frequently visit Berlin and it's good occasion for us now also to meet some potential partners today. And so um, we will I have, have a question. I have a mentor. He's uh, the owner of the Aya and Aya. Matcha. Aya Aya. By Matcha. Matcha by Aya. Oh, Aya. 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 And, Aya. and uh, he's calling himself the, man, uh, the tea pop. And he's very interested in you. Ah. Can I give him the Easy. contact? You can just, uh, there is my phone. Uh, you can... Uh, they have a nice shop. Yeah, they have a nice shop. They can just, if you have iPhone, you can just 
like yeah. it like that. If not, just uh, open the QR code and uh, okay. give it back to me. It's, I only have one. Save, only save one. a trace. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah. this, this is saving money. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's saving the trees. We're caring about nature, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good uh, for companies it's now, trees. like a greenwash anyone like with, uh, we carry about the trees, but saving money actually. Uh, so we have this possibility too. Uh, yeah, so yeah, if someone needs you can, yeah, yeah. oh, thank you, French Hanganxie. Wow, beautiful. In, so, oh, I see you on Instagram, I believe, uh, maybe some there or not. If yes. you have time, um, I would like to have you on my podcast. I'm running the podcast. Easy, this easy go. And that would be great. So many people asking for you. Okay, and, easy. Uh, easy. Easy go. We can do it today after after the story, after the ceremony. We can do because we don't have plans for evening today. Perfect. Good. Uh, good. good. We also can film something. We also film something. Okay. So one more infuse of this one or switch to next. 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 Okay. Next. We still still share. Oh, what next? What next? Let the next will be, let it be Gaba Shusha, oh no, Assam Gaba Hun. Assam Gaba Hun. Yeah, this is our, how to say, the, we're proud of this tea because it's our production from Thailand. It's made on our factory and it's kind of, uh, how to say, a very special tea. Yeah, you know, it's, it's uh, regularly we do Gaba from Ulun tea trees and, uh, or, in Japan, we have this green tea gaba, whatever, but no Assam gaba. Mm -hmm. But uh, we decided why we can't just make the same technological processing, but just use Assamic leaves, not the Ulun leaves. And uh, this Assamic gaba, it's pretty also special. It's our, not actually invention, because some Thai people also tried to do it before, but I do believe that our experiment was a little bit more better made, yeah. Uh, they have very good technologists who learned in uh, ta Taiwan and he have good skills how to produce the right GABA. This we have in uh, in Netherlands also. This is not very exclusive, but still it's exclusive. I don't have <laughs> more, but we, I have few few bucks. Yeah, it will be not too strong because luckily I only had small sample, <laughs> so it will be very light. Luckily for us. Yeah, luckily for us. I'll show you. Yeah. I will write it, write it to the list. Uh, yeah, it's like you know what I found. Uh, this I found on the market in Netherlands. This I bought today just here in the shop, uh, one tea shop here. This is our own. This is uh, from here. <laughs> this is from Papua New Guinea. I just, it's my tea knife or... Somebody likes yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, this carrot is only full. Yeah. Double the leaf for sunshine. This is number eight for the day. This is a Thai Gaba Hong Cha. So it's Assam Gaba. Yeah, Assam Gaba. Okay. I guess I missed one because they have only seven points. Ah, first is Nepal green, second is Jungo Hong or Red Ulung. Yeah, 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 on Red Ulung, how you call it. Georgian Wild yeah. is free. Yeah. Thailand Aged Ulung is four. Yes. This one is purple. five. Purple one? Uh, yeah, purple. Yeah, and uh, Taiwan, uh, Taiwan, eight, twenty-five years old. Age is number six. Gabo Dali Fasian is number seven. Ah, I missed the eighth one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, Thai Gaba Honcha, Thai Gaba Assam Honcha. It's number eight now. Yeah. Well, we're still organized. Maybe because I'm Germany. It's so organized people here, I like it. <laughs> yeah, so even me is so organized today, so I just even write down the names. Good. 
when I was in Thailand this year, I also, I also bring my family uh, because after current things happen, in the beginning of March, we just decided to go for three months to a little bit to more chilly place, how we can call it. And uh, I was in Kopangan Island, and there was a, one beautiful lady. Uh, she have a kind of uh, healing retreat uh, center, something, and they invited me a few times to make a ceremony for them. And uh, they find out a good uh, a name for what I'm doing. and said the DJing, DJing, because I was a DJ for ten years, and I and I. <laughs> And I played uh, different uh, electronic music, mostly experimental, hardcore, techno, something, breakcore noise. And uh, after that, I switched to tea, a very different topic. But you also play tennis? Yeah, a little bit, but uh, it's like only a hobby, uh, not professional. But I, what I can play in real, it's only vinyl, turntable, mm -hmm. some scratching, something like. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and, uh, and they say, okay, you now switch from DJing to TJing, and <laughs> so it, it was really funny. This tea is also pretty intense. You see, I really put very low amount, only four grams. Where is this tea coming from? It's from Thailand. from Thailand. Thailand, yeah, Thailand, Assam, Gaba, Hong Cha. Yeah, you can even uh, make a, you can even make a photo, actually I have original packaging, so you will easily find it. Gaba Asam Khon. Yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, it's really good. Also, but before, it's really the good. Really good. Really good. Really good. Really good. Really good. Yeah, just me. Mm, no, I don't think so. I think it was just not so sweet. It, so it's not sweet. Uh, well, because it's it's place. not uh, Ulung and it's not uh, Camellia sinensis, it's Camellia assamica. Camellia assamica reverie is more, how to say, rough for some point and more intense. Uh, yeah, I, I felt like the previous one was rough as well. Yeah, but it's... There is, a, there is an interesting question. There is only one tea shop in the whole world who is having a Krasi Kolumna um, variety. What is it? Do you know anything about it? What? Krasi Kolumna. Also, they're making tea of it. It's from Verdant Tea. Uh, and they should not have any caffeine, but I never heard from anyone else about this cultivar. Uh, brr, maybe just if I will see it in Chinese, I will recognize it. But uh, when I see I heard it in something like uh, I never heard. Because, you know, actually, in, even in China, if you travel to some regions, you can all the time find uh, some really special varieties and special teas. For example, I, for the first time I arrived to Yunde County, and where I found uh, the cultivar called Tenzicha. Tenzicha. Actually, it's where is the Camellia sinensis, Samica, Camellia teliensis, some other types of teas. Even Camellia teliensis is pretty rare. The Tenzicha. There's a really, really low amount of these trees, like a few hundred of trees in total. So it's like very hard to find. And this taste of this cultivar is really also rare. Uh, so, and I just instantly found. And uh, for example, we will later try Chao Chao with you. It's uh, fried oolong uh, from Guangdong province. And not so many people also even know about it. And even in China. And it's so easy to find something which no one has. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's so difficult to find it uh, if you just uh, maybe abroad. We need to travel. And if you travel all the time, you definitely find something special. <laughs> you, 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 you just need to have a taste. So I don't, uh, how to say, I'm not surprised that it's existing, but I just don't hear it, heard it, but, uh, but I'm not surprised that I don't hear it. Because if someone starts talking to me, I know anything about tea. It uh, means that you know nothing about it. <laughs> you, know, you need to spend all your life and you can know like 5% of uh, upper layer surface of knowledge about it. Because for example, yeah, I wrote this book and uh, yeah, I just spent uh, almost 10 years, more than half of time. Yeah, yeah, more than half of time. I actually have three copies. Uh, if you like, Anna, maybe you open uh, the beautiful... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have more copies. This is 89 euro. If you like to buy, you can even or, or you can even order it online, and we will deliver it like in a second. <laughs> because I have four copies. 
Wow. I, I, I don't think. Possible with tea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just one second delivery. The truth, we have it. Wow. <laughs> it immediately. Free, free delivery. Immediate. Free immediate delivery. Door to door. <laughs> yeah, actually, I was wondering if we just today take only 12 copies and and good what I take with 12 because I only have four left. I just visit a few tea shops here and any tea shop owner, most of them, oh yeah, I want it. And uh, we start discussing and very good people here actually in, uh, who have uh, tea shops. Uh, so, uh, yeah. This is, you see, this taste of red tea, like regular, like regular Chinese red tea. And also, yeah, but uh, with GABA feeling. But I want to say about the regions. Actually, yeah, you see, there's an almost 1,000 counties in China which produce tea. 1,000. In each of this county, you can spend maybe a year just to find out how many farmers, which county have a lot of villages, maybe hundreds of villages some counties have. And uh, in each village, you have some special something or not don't have doesn't matter but still so imagine there is a million of millions of farmers which involved in tea only in Anxi county in Fujian province mm. but they have seven provinces and they have almost 1000 counties and in each of these counties they have millions of farmers involved in tea so actually if we talk only but we all don't only, only have China we also have Japan and Thailand and Vietnam and, and anything else but of course China is the biggest source for anything and you can open up China all the time and you can travel all your life and all your grandchildren and grandchildren of your grandchildren will not open up even 10 percent maybe only like known something but yeah it's all the time we can research uh, but now in present times, which is not very good, that some old traditions are slowly, uh, how to say, they die. And especially with yellow teas, for example, they now became greens in most of places. Green teas, they start not making this yellow tea. And uh, still, uh, still standing with our older traditions are really not much of them. Uh, in most of places, but uh, but still, <laughs> even with this problem, you can still open up and open and open new uh, varieties, new places. Because what I like that the younger younger generation really learn a lot, and uh, because in current in current moment, uh, it's a very big market in China. All, all this uh, tea and around and, and production and harvesting, a lot of universities. A lot of uh, masters, a lot of factories. So it's a big market. In uh, what is good that in uh, tea production areas, most of the Yao they don't go to the bigger cities. They still stay because it's good business and it's good to be part of it. And they also start do something. But because of big amount of competitors, uh, China is a lot of competitors for anything, and uh, they need to do something special. And this is why in some regions, more and more young farmers and uh, even middle generation farmers, they start to do something special, what we just try now, like, like yeah, let's do some gaba shampoo or teguanin uh, ferment is like hecha and uh, make a loom from the teguanin tea, which is like, what are you doing? We even have this with white tea, for example. I also had incredibly white tea, but ferment as hecha and with a golden mold, this uh, dinghua mold on it, I have it in the book. Uh, it's interesting uh, method of fermentation and you have this fungus uh, yeah so it's really special and um, so please send me back this beautiful vessel it will be useful for me to have yeah yeah so yeah uh, finally we we switch to next one or we brew more of this one more my next one okay let's go Let's go, let's go to the next. Yeah, it's still, it's still we can brew so strong tea from this vessel. Yeah. Thank you for the so beautiful. Thank My you. My master, he had a granite, a teapot made of stone. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I never saw that in, in China. And even there, the master's slowly dying out, right? Ah, actually there was a lot of, uh, now we have uh, this, uh, 
move and sure it's uh, stone looks like uh, muto like like wood mm -hmm. uh, they make uh, in Taiwan this is a called uh, moyu shi or, or, or uh, black jade hi nice to meet you welcome welcome you can join yeah and we have even a cup while we have two guests which not tried our aged teas aged tea so i'll brew it again just for you both because it's like uh, one of the most, most expensive ones and it's uh, for 20 years old 20 years 25 years aged oolong tea from taiwan yeah yeah so yeah 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 so we have it one more time yeah so it's special for guys yeah and our next tea will be let me have a look what we have i have some very strange japanese green tea from this year actually from may and it's uh, came from uh, it came from uncommon region not from Sizuoka, not from Kyoto, and it came from, I do believe, from uh, how it's called? Uh, I forgot. I just want to stick with this tea, it's three hours. It's a Japanese green made by Jap Chinese technology, like Mao Fen, but it's from Japan. Uh, and my uh, friend uh, in uh, Amsterdam, German, he's a good musician and his wife is Japanese. And uh, she traveled to Japan in May, in the beginning of June, and she brought me a few strange Japanese teas. I will try this. It's where the characters actually. Uh, this is, I believe, like Liu, so it's like green, but sometimes it's Chinese characters in it. Yeah. But this is from Japan, so it's. Yu, I mean, it means like jade and uh, liu, like green, and this cha, like tea, like green jade something. I have no idea. Uh, but I tried it once, pretty interesting. But uh, let us try again. So we try green jade uh, Japanese tea. We don't have it in collection, but let it be. Have you said the Japanese, they don't have really black tea? Uh, they have, yeah. they have, they have even something like poor, you know, uh, but uh, it's not very common to find it uh, abroad. Regularly all these black teas is for inner market and because uh, they not promote it uh, for abroad, they just... Uh, but you can find like hoji cha, which is like a roasted, strongly roasted uh, sen cha actually. So it's, it was green tea before <laughs> they roasted so strong. Uh, yeah. I tried really strange Japanese tea. It was just, I don't know, tasted black one, but it mm. tasted like um, mm -hmm. seaweed. Uh -huh. mm. So, not yeah. really fascinating. Also. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad place of place. Yeah, so this so, is so one. So, probably they find in the market, they also find like all this. So, this is. That's green tea great. from Japan. Ah. We will definitely write a good blog today because I'm so, so drunk. <laughs> so it's good. <laughs> yeah, so it's only nine. So it should go, we go pretty good. Uh. For me, it's like a taste of uh, Chinese mouth and mouth and tea, but uh, uh, how would I forget this? It's uh, some Sofen island uh, in Japan. Uh, not very small one, but not very big one. And but I forgot the name. Maybe I will check how it's called. Uh, no, 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 no. There is Japan over here. Japan is here. And they have, yeah, I never, I even know how it's Shikoku. Shikoku. Yeah, so it's here. Yeah, in Japan is here. So it's near Hiroshima, not too far. And uh, yes, so it's uh, from Osaka to Kobe and Shikoku. So it's Shikoku. Shikoku green tea. Yeah, really uncommon thing. And it's an island. Yeah, it's an island. But it's connected to the mainland, of course. Yeah. Main island. <laughs> yeah. So... 
what we have now, more, more or less. I will just make a second infusion, but I think it's enough for this tea. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting, but yeah, maybe more green tea. Mm -hmm. I think this was the last. I brew one more, it's enough. I for this green. Green tea Yeah, okay. Let's let's go to the next. Ah yeah, because you see I use a kind of uh, Chinese traditional gunfu cha style brewing. When I have a small teapot, which is actually Japanese pot, but still you can use it also the same way. Uh, but uh, this is Taiwanese. Uh, and uh, yeah, and you you use like from five to 10 grams for a small pot, but actually the same amount you use for bigger pot. So in this case, you, uh, if you use it like that, uh, you can make a very quick, very fast infusions. And uh, this opens up the taste more properly. So it's not only for be beautiful appearance of tea ceremony, but it's also a very practical reason uh, to have it like that. Uh, so this is why. Okay, let the next tea will be like, ha. Huh. It's also a very special thing. So this is a Xin Cha. <laughs> Where is the sign Xin Cha, which means new tea. <laughs> but actually this tea is, is from 2004. Uh, so this, it, and it's green. So it's green tea from 2004. And it's good Mao Fan tea. So it's a traditional, or even Bilochun. It looks like Bilochun, Bilochun green tea. And I just, all the time I explain to anyone that there is no uh, nothing like, oh, it's old tea and it's, you can't drink it. Or any tea you can drink, even after five years or 10 or 20 or 100, doesn't matter. It's not spoiled. If it's not, uh, if you don't, uh, you don't put it in a wet place, they have a lot of fungus or some aflatoxin things, uh, it's okay to drink. But just it's deeper, the taste, it starts naturally fermenting. But the green tea, because of fixation, it's not fermenting the same as Shenpur, for example. But uh, uh, this is just a funny example. How, if you just put your green tea for 18 years, how it will be like? Let us try. You know, uh, the, the origin of this tea is also very interesting. I, I have a very good friend, uh, Jeroen Bethold. Uh, he lives in Amsterdam. Uh, he is a ceramist and artist. Uh, very good, actually, modern pottery, modern ceramic porcelain artist. Uh, Jeroen Bethold, and he was one of the first, uh, I have a very good interview with him on my YouTube channel, uh, my English YouTube channel, and uh, there is an uh, interesting story that he was one of the first potter, potters who traveled to Isin, to China, from Europe. And uh, he developed few shapes for uh, Isin masters, because he is also a designer, uh, so he is like modern contemporary artist and he, he developed uh, new shapes of uh, pottery and uh, then they made uh, very good uh, eating pots from his shapes and they present then he traveled to China they present to him with green tea but he don't like green tea <laughs> and he stored it for 18 years and when they met he said, oh, Sergio, you like tea? I have some, <laughs> but it's maybe old. I said, wow, it's good, it's old, <laughs> great, <laughs> give it to me. He was so, oh, Sergio, I not expected, but you will be like, you will like this idea to drink like old, not fresh green. I said, it's a finally it's a great idea. So, yeah. So this is uh, Chinese. So you just took his old? Yeah, this is just his can. It was even closed. I opened up it mm -hmm. <laughs> last year. So he presented me last year. It is from 2004. <laughs> yes, it's pretty funny. That's mm. the yeah, let's try yeah, green tea. Usually, you know, like when, when uh, somebody brought me tea from China, mm -hmm. it was like, hey, green tea, store it in the fridge. It have a little bit chain away already, like this aged taste. And uh, it stored absolutely bad conditions. It, it was not sealed. It's just a, a paper can without any sealing. Just in the paper? Just in the paper. And it's still okay. So this is why so all I the myths... Never throw away my tea when Never, ever. Not, don't throw away the tea and don't uh, carry too much 
it's good to store properly, but don't worry if you store something not proper, because it still has taste. Yeah, but it's already the taste of egg, yeah. How do you define the taste? <laughs> <laughs> it's unusual, yeah, but it's still, it's still, it's That's, still. I mean, it's nice. Yeah, and and after after more twenty years, it will be aged green tea, Lao Liu Cha, and I first aged green tea for first time I found in Taiwan, because Taiwanese people know how to do business, you know. They found some old un unneeded green tea from fifties, from sixties, which no one need in Europe, in America, and some other countries. And they bring it to Taiwan, and even they have some of their own storage, and they roast it a little bit on a, on a very good precious wood, uh, like a fruit tree wood, like apricot wood or something, and it became so great aged Lao Cha, really good one. And I have some. It's actually it's expensive, but not very expensive. It's maybe like two thousand dollars for kilo, but still it's comparable to Shenpur, aged Shenpur, which only one cake can cost. 30,000 or something, it's okay, but it's still aged, so it's 60, 50, 70 years aged green tea, which is absolutely incredible, but this is something in the middle, it's not yet ready, uh, but yeah, but still, it's funny to try. Uh, you still have all, all the components, mostly the vitamins and some, you know, uh, I don't know, I'm not a biochemist, but something which you have in green tea, then it's like very fresh, polyphenols, something go out, of course, this is why. But they replace it by ferments, because it's naturally fermenting during the storage, during the aging, because the same what we have with wine or cheese or any fermented food, and, and especially aged fermented food, the same we have with tea. And even with green tea, we also have it. Now, now, now we brew one more steep of this one because it's, it's interesting to try. Yeah, once I even had like, I also forgot like in the kitchen, uh, one open bag of green tea <laughs> and after seven years I found it and I think that it's, it's in the kitchen. So a lot of sm our smells, also it's just near the window, so light and also open bag, not even closed. And there was still a taste. <laughs> but of course it's better to store properly if you want to have the same taste. You And especially a fresh tea, of course, uh, is affects uh, this, uh, how to say, not proper storage. If you like put very fresh green tea and you want to make a good something. But yeah. Let me share also with you guys some our sweets. Dried fruits, I can also take and, and also have more green jade Japanese tea. And now we have like um, um, jade Jian, ah, not Jiangsu, uh, Jiangsu, Jiangsu province, province 2004 green tea. So it was tea number 10 only. I have so many left. And the one who will drink all from here will won a prize today. <laughs> yeah, because... Okay. So the next one will be something what we have more here. I will let me check. That's what we had. And what we have here. Mm -hmm. Oh, great, 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 great. Because we start drinking less fermented teas. So this is uh, actually our, also our production. It's a Georgian uh, chow cha, how we call it. Fried, uh, roasted, highly roasted tea. Uh, we f roasted for eight hours on low temperature. And uh, we made it in the uh, middle of June. Uh, this year in Georgia on our factory and we have it was only one bunch only five kilo something and we still have maybe a kilo in Amsterdam even less maybe even less than one kilo we still have in Amsterdam so it's really unique one if you will try the color is still really uh, light yeah 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 but it's uh, yeah it's I will put 
for you in a cup. Uh, let me try it. Uh, this is very unusual. It's uh, also I didn't even break the sticks. We have still have the sticks. Yes, like yeah. So this is Georgian Chao Cha. Yeah. <laughs> So where do you have Nepal, China, Georgia, Thailand, uh, wow. Taiwan, Japan? Most of geography is covered. And this is 11th tea, great. Challenging. And, and the previous tea was like, oh. like been getting older in Amsterdam. Yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> yeah, 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 Amsterdam tea, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amsterdam. Well, after the yes. Yes. Uh, in Netherlands, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually, run by Linda. Uh, well, there's different different lady. Yeah, oh. the, Linda and, and they had, she had a neighbor. Yes. Uh, she have a neighbor. Uh, his name is uh, Johan, uh -huh. and uh, Johan Janssen, and he have a special plants company. He called it. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, so you can take the cup here and join us. We have only 11 of tea today, so we still have. We still, we still have something. Yeah, you can take the cup, the cup. Um, but okay. there is also um, the tea plant. Oh, maybe there are this a lot one. Of tea plantations in Europe, right? uh, yeah, in Germany, here also, yeah, yeah, uh, and, and also in uh, France and in uh, Portugal tea. and in Italy and everywhere. But Scotland, Scotland. But Scotland actually, is actually, if we talk about European tea, it's interesting what it exists. Yeah. But uh, it's but compete with uh, Asian uh, in price CP value cost performance how we can call it, it's difficult yeah. but it's good we also have Dutch tea because in Netherlands we have we have this Dutch tea and actually uh, Johan especially for us by order he made uh, white green and black tea mm -hmm. green and black maybe like pretty how to say common not very special but uh, but the white tea after we store it around two years. It became really good. It became so we have this Dutch white, and people will love it and order more. And even plan as soon we, as we sold out, uh, we will order more of this tea. Ah, this is actually the you didn't see this is a, uh, the Georgian Chao Cha tea. What we try now? Yeah, welcome. Georgian. It's it's it was roasted for eight for eight years. Yeah. And maybe while we have a new guest, I will, oh, yeah. I will brew again this aged, <laughs> aged. <laughs> oh, can someone else? <laughs> yeah, we still have no water. We need to wait for water a little. Can you go and come with me again? <laughs> also, today I just in the plan was to tell a few stories about our tea forest in Thailand. Uh, because as I mentioned, yeah, we have our own tea plantations, but actually one of these plantations is not a plantation at all. It's a forest. And why it's a forest? Because it's, you know, in Thailand, they don't have a strong tea culture. Before the Chinese came to the Northern territories, uh, there was few Chinese uh, settlements uh, around 500 years ago even, but the biggest settlements uh, began only after the revolution uh, middle in the middle of the 20th century, uh, some came to Taiwan, some came to Thailand, but yeah, but these uh, are local people. It's actually the same tribes which you can find in Laos, Burma, or southern China. It's Lahu, Yao, Lao, Vadzu, all these uh, like small national minorities. In China, they're called Xiao Shu Minzu, which are the nations from small tree. And in the beginning of my book also, there's a lot of not a lot of information, but some information about it. Uh, but still, uh, also, we can find like uh, uh, in uh, no, 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 no. We just put next one, and uh, from here we can do something like they had uh, actually the very long history of consumption of tea, but in a very different way. They have this tea which is called uh, Miang in uh, Thai language. Miang, it's a kind of fermented tea but not as a drink, but as a cabbage. You ferment cabbage, and they also ferment the tea leaves, the big tea leaves, as a cabbage, the same way. <laughs> and still, you can find the miang and the kind of different type of other fermented teas in 
in uh, Cambodia and in Burma, uh, Myanmar, in Laos and in Thailand. Even in southern China, we also have a little bit of this tradition, but almost disappeared. And uh, now Myang tradition, in, it's also slowly dying tradition of these hill tribes, uh, because uh, younger generation, we don't like this fermented tea leaves. It's very special taste. Uh, sometimes they will like, mm, you know, like stinky tofu from China. It's still like, uh, stinky tofu is still popular, but this is, this Myang is not very popular and younger Thai people, they don't like it. And this is why the, the less and less people use this uh, tea, uh, use this food. And they start to cut these tea trees just to grow something else, like lychee trees, plum trees, something else, like even apples, whatever, just to have money because no one needs this myang, this myang is cheap also. And, and these trees are sometimes just old tea trees, like that, like 80, 100, 150, even up to 400 years old tea trees, which is highly valued in China and now it's prohibited to cut in China. But in Taiwan, uh, in Thailand, we recognize these trees like a regular uh, agricultural thing, not like a special old gu shu cha, whatever, like it's called in Chinese, like aged old tea trees. And uh, they became uh, in danger. And some uh, people really cut it totally and placed by other, even they plant ulun tea trees just to harvest more and make more common tea, but not this miang, whatever. Even if we cut it for this purpose, still it's in danger. And uh, we decided, okay, let's do something uh, because we also want, want to have this kind of tea uh, business in, Thai in Thailand. And uh, we bought our first uh, 15 hectares of uh, this land with the tea trees on it. In total, it's around 5,000 trees, but actually it's not very big harvest because some trees is young, like 50 years old, something. Some is up to two, 300 years old. Uh, so mostly it's around 120 years old or something. And we decided to find out the interesting idea how to present it to public. So we called it Tea Forest Project. And you can subscribe or adopt a tea tree. And you have, have a, like, a, of course it will be not tea from only this tree, but from the same plot maybe like, because we just also decide which amount of fee we promise to those who subscribe for this tea tree. So we decided, okay, let's promise for the very beginning uh, 300 grams of the tea from if you just subscribe. So we have this uh, on our website, uh, tforestproject.com. You can easily find it uh, there. But uh, also, uh, this tree is like, uh, this tea is, um, it's also manually made mostly. We have this factory, but uh, uh, shame poor because of low amount of from like all these 15 hectares. Sometimes we have is like 100 kilos, 200 kilos. After two weeks, we can again harvest. It's 20. It's all all year. All year you can do. Um, only during summer we have small period of rainy season. We don't harvest or harvest less and do black tea, not shampoo or green tea. But uh, we're slowly developing. We only started in this April, and uh, next year maybe we will be ready to uh, meet friends who want to participate or whatever. But now you can adopt a tree <laughs> if you like. So it's, uh, and also we have some tea. We will try tea from here until the next one. Oh, yeah, so. Teaforestproject.com. Anna made it. She's the master of websites. <laughs> yeah. This is our Georgian strange <laughs> experimental stuff. We'll put it out. Now we brew the tea from our forest. Let it be. Yes, so we only have this year we had like from very first bunch we had like few kilos of it and we still have like one kilo in Amsterdam only but uh, from this autumn I do believe we will have few tea cakes also few bunches of tea cakes hopefully. Yes. So this is a raw puer or shen puer from Thailand and from our tea forest project. And uh, this is a, a the trees is around, as I told, from 80 years old to maybe 200 something. So it's very different. And uh, 
And actually, this bunch was roasted by me personally. Yeah. <laughs> and we had only like six kilos of it. Hopefully, later this year will be more. Uh -huh. Junks who I found out, uh -huh. they are not drinking any tea. They ah. just bring me giving us hot water to yes. wash the dishes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. we was in another, was not a Pujo and. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The soft of Junks so they drink, they drink a little. Yeah, so this is a. Uh, Tai Shan Puer. I will write it down. It will be T, T number 12, actually. So, Tai Shan Puer T by T Forest Project. Yeah. It's pretty strong Cha Chi, how we can call it. Yeah. Or T, T Energy. Or Cha Chi. Chachi, chachi, chachi. Uh, actually, there is a the most thing I hate in this world is the two things. First is YBM music, mm -hmm. and the second is uh, oil Giles transcriptions of characters. <laughs> what? Oil Giles, what you can find on Taiwan, and we have with all this Chiai oh, or some other crazy letterings in English, and people start trying to read it. But it's completely not the same how it sounds in Chinese. Tai chi. So, uh, tai, always Tai Chi, Tai, tai Chi, uh, Tai Chi, Tai Chi, uh, yeah, Qi Gong, but not Qi Gong, how it often yeah. can be recognized. Uh, there's always uh, Kung Fu, but not Kung Fu, it's Gong Fu. It's not Kung Fu, but uh, in English uh, transcription is still like, you often can find this uh, Kung Fu and so on. So it's actually, yeah, there's still more Shen. For those who want it, yeah. yeah. So it's a D number twelve. Uh, hopefully, we will try at least twenty. It will be something like I'm speeding up. It's my challenge for today. Let's try twenty teas. Twenty teas. Twenty teas. But we only have forty minutes left. Okay. And so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shogabov. It will be lost in fusion for this shen. Actually, most of these teas, we can drink not three, four infusions, but 12 to 20. Mm -hmm. Especially Gaba Dali Foshan and Gaba Shu and Gaba Shen. Uh, and uh, yeah, some, at least 12. Uh, but just I want you to show the difference, uh, the different teas. And if I will have a smaller pot, maybe we can just make more infusions, but still. Oh, no one wanted? Or it's full. still full? Still full. Yeah, and have one more. There is no Shen lovers over here? I think it just... Um, maybe more sweet stuff <laughs> we have and we will okay let's do that let's go to the next actually this shen is pretty good but it's a pity to throw it but not throw it just go it out and in Russian I call it отпустить чай it means let the tea go go for a walk yeah go tea go for a walk to our sweet KD uh, tea pile. We have a post-fermenting process. We can do shoe of it. <laughs> uh, it will be like already. Sell it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. it, it will be very expensive one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to. Okay. So you can. You need to try it. It's, so it's maybe yeah, a little bit. It's a bird for. So the next tea, it will be Gaba Shucha or Gaba Shupuer, which is really special. And uh, how we can call it? It's from 2020, so already two years of storage. Uh, oh, so good smell. So yeah, this is a. Uh, 
puer, uh, which was fermented in vacuum in GABA, in, in a uh, amber chamber, uh, altitude chamber. And uh, here we have kind of special puer. It's a GABA? Mm -hmm. GABA shoe. Yeah, so it's uh, shoe wear gaba. Actually, it also was a <laughs> the invention of this tea. It was a very funny thing. We was on, on a factory, uh, which I already mentioned in Yunlong County in Yunnan province, uh, our good friends, and they are have kind of uh, experimental station on this. They have a very big production. They also have also experimental part, and they uh, presented me to their experiment of shen gaba shen puer. It was first their invention, but uh, my colleague, who was with me, uh, my employee, Nikolai, and he said, he is a big fan of shoeware. And he just made a joke. Oh, can they please do like shoeware GABA? And we just all recognized it as a joke because no one makes like, GABA shoe, it's impossible. But the technology is also, okay, let's ask to try. <laughs> And they were so curious about can we do that or not, and they, they spoiled some material on that, but they actually, after two years, we dropped my message in each other and say, oh, Sergey, you know, we've done something. Uh, let us send you a sample. And they sent me this sample, say, great, can you please do like a few hundred kilos of it, and, and <laughs> okay, no problem. And they done also tea cake uh, from similar material and also uh, loose GABA. We still have this in amount actually, which is good. Uh, and this is a really exclusive product. <laughs> so it was only one batch? Uh, two batches, two batches. Uh, no, not even three I do believe, they, yeah. But, but this year we didn't made, and last year also, but hopefully next year we will do more, mm -hmm. because just in 2020 I ordered uh, almost one ton of it. So it's pretty good amount. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah, not very affordable tea. It's like something. Yeah, please try more. Uh, the second infusion, I do believe, is better because actually, maybe you've seen uh, some teas. I we I don't flush first infusions mm -hmm. uh, because I don't waste the water. We shouldn't have a lot, and some teas are actually okay to drink also first infusion. But regularly, I do recommend uh, flush it, of course. Independent, doesn't matter which tea is it? Actually, shoe is more recommendable, okay. don't drink. And also some uh, red teas, uh, also tea guanine, I do believe. So most of teas, most of teas, of course, it's better to don't drink first infusion. But uh, yeah, I do drink it oft, often because also during uh, the tea green testing ones? to... What? Green ones? Green ones also. Actually, any tea. It's better to flush, but uh, it depends. It depends, and uh, some people like, some people not. But shoeware regularly because it's a lot of dust on it. Uh, yeah, it's better, and also when you only once visit a factory in Mannheim, <laughs> <laughs> you will definitely want to wash it. And you can look at photos. I have it in the book. It's not a secret. <laughs> Definitely yeah. we'll wash it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cigarettes, hair. Yeah. Uh, it's okay, it's okay. But it was also a piece of the finger, yeah. dried one. In my uh, finger? Finger. finger. Not nail. nail. Let's nail with a piece of uh, meat also. Uh, sorry, yeah, probably sorry. Something it it, was, it was a 15, um, it was 15 it was years ago. So I will not only need to learn Dutch, but also German, as I understood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it's slowly yeah, learning. Same goes all the way. Usually yeah. if I read the Dutch. Yeah, read yeah actually it's so similar. Uh, my sound. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, they do, they do. But uh, sure, with some special sounds and so like Dutch, longer. Ah. Yeah. More of it. I have more of shoe. And I will free it from the pot. I think it's enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As soon as we fill it totally, we will need to stop. 
because I now don't have m more storage. How did you find it? I like it. But, it but uh, is, uh, is here anyone who never tried shoe before? With, okay, perfect. This is a shoe pour. This is actually, yeah, this, you can uh, show up the book. Actually, Yannick, uh, we very accidentally met online. I found his, uh, uh, how do, uh, can I tell the story? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was in Amsterdam and, and, and I, on a wall, I found uh, what he searched for a room and I had possibility to find it. And this is how we start talking uh, online. I just uh, drop a message. <laughs> and this is why Yannick here, because he's he not in tea, into tea yet. <laughs> no, yet. <he's> yeah, yet. <laughs> but now already. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yannick is Berlin. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and, and, I just, uh, and I just say, okay, I will be in Berlin in a few days. Okay, I had a tea session. So we can meet. Yeah, so yeah. Okay, so the next tea, let us do something special and maybe it will be the last or, or not last or not, we still have time. Okay, perfect. The shans will already drink pretty lot and uh, the aged ulun we tried and the... Uh, uh, huh. I have more of Thai shan, but a different one. And Japanese tea, yeah, it's all okay. Let us try something different. Yeah. Let us try as soon as we try and we start to drink gaba tea. Let us try Lugu Dunding Gaba Ulung. It's uh, from our assortment. It also can be found in the Netherlands. We have it. This is uh, yeah, Gaba Dunding. Uh, from Taiwan. This is from Taiwan Island. Yeah, you can also have a look uh, if you like. Uh, yeah. Dunding. Dunding. Actually, actually, it's very funny. The name in a local uh, minority language, Dunding, it means up and down. But the Chinese, by the ear, they hear, oh, Dung Ding. It's like a frozen peak because Dung is a winter. Yeah. And the uh, ding is like a, like a mountain, like shine, but the peak of it. Mm. And uh, in Chinese, by the ear, they hear, oh, yeah, let it be like uh, dun ding. And they just write the characters. But the name, if you go sometimes in dun ding, it's only a few hundred meters high, small <laughs> mountain. And it's not cold at all. All the time of the year, it's very hot. Not it's more than 30 <laughs> degrees most of the time there. And uh, it's absolutely not dung. It's uh, and even not a ding. It's just uh, let's say so. Yeah, the but but it's pretty. You know, it's uh, like it's uh, like like that, and As up and down, course. dung ding. We need to go up and down all the time. So it's like a small mountain uh, around this more flat area, and uh, and the here you need to go up. And they cultivate like upstairs. Yeah, yeah. Upstairs there is a village called Dung Ding. <laughs> and in this Dundin village, we do tea actually, which is also pretty strange for Taiwan. <laughs> yeah, funny. Uh, but yeah, but still we have we have this we have this Dundin tea. Dundin actually very famous for the roasting because mostly in Dundin uh, you can find the roasted ulons. And uh, yeah, so someone still want uh, the shoe? Yeah. We still have. You can take it from here, maybe. Or yeah, 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 better to use this, this gondola. Bay. Oh, these small samples help me to brew, not too strong, because there's only four or five grams, and it's really enough, as we see. Because I'm all, always time, all the time I put ten, maybe even twelve. Uh, there was a joke uh, with my some old tea friend. Uh, he uh, all the time write uh, kind of small articles about the tea he drink uh, and have like small business also selling tea but for only for friends kind of and he said uh, okay I all the time think that I put only seven grams but once I decide to weigh the amount of tea I put in my guy one and it was 18 somehow <laughs> 18 <laughs> 18, 18. Yeah, a little bit different. Just 10 grams more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
this is actually one of my favorite GABA Ulun teas from our collection because it's uh, very balanced. It's also a little bit roasted, also contains GABA taste, also with like, um, how to say, uh, hmm, all these fruity notes. Uh, it's all, all exists. Yeah. Can you please send me back this beautiful pot if you still. No, no, not this one. That, that one. This you can still. We're going to obey. It's okay. okay. It's still, we still have something. Yeah, oh, you, you can share more, more maybe. Yeah. Why not? Try. Good. We have fresh blood. So great. <laughs> <laughs> so you can drink more. Perfect. I will make one more fusion because it's actually good. You can try at least. Hopefully none of you have blood pressure problems. Only once I, I just made a crazy uh, tea session for 57 types of teas. It was for, for five hours. Uh, we have some breaks during it, not like now, but uh, still uh, after this session, there was more than 70 people on it. Uh, this is why we can infuse pretty fast. I have the same pot, but like three, four infusions and, and go. And uh, this way, they had a, a very funny uh, thing that one lady uh, called me at 5 a.m. something <laughs> and said to me, oh, Sergi, how I can get to sleep after that? <laughs> Okay, I said, yeah, that's good. I said, I said, just yeah, I don't even try. And just, uh, the actual session was still 10 p.m., so it oh. was pretty, pretty yeah, late. We have live. Three yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, we have. This, this is why so we start at four, not at uh, seven okay. or eight. So this tea, I will free it. Yeah, this we'll go to. Nice. Yeah, you want more? One more infusion. I'm not sure if the other ones, but for me, it would be great. Yeah, I will, I will take one more. I will make one more. Yeah, this is good. Actually, most of the teas is good. Yeah. Somehow. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, definitely. This is not aged. No, this one not, but before. Ah, yeah, before. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. 25 years, right? Yeah. And this one was the uh, This is uh, Lugu Dunding Gaba Olong from Taiwan. Yeah, this one. So I do believe that we will brew a few more. We'll look what... Ah, yeah, I promised you. I promised you and I forgot. So, I have... I have pretty rare stuff. Which... Which no one have. And it's even in the original packaging. It's written Gao Shan Chao Cha. Yeah, Gao Shan Chao Cha. Gaoshan it means high mountain and chao cha means literally can be translated as fried tea because chao is frying, not roasted, not hunbei, not uh, but fried tea. And why do we call it chao cha? Because it's actually it's very very long history uh, behind this name. Uh, it's from Song Dynasty, more than 11 centuries ago. They started uh, this technology be found, be, be started in. The region, it's a northern Guangdong province, Jiayan County, not a major, ma, ma, um, major county. These two counties are not very fun, familiar actually. Most of the people who do know something about Guangdong Lulus, we only know Fenhuan and Sung or some tea from this Fenhuan region, Chaozhou region. But this is not Chaozhou, this is uh, Jiayan and uh, also Meizhou. This is from Jiayan actually. And, uh, it's very local tea. Only a few villages do that. And uh, it's really interesting how do they process the tea. Uh, this is why I, before I brew for you like Georgian chow chow, we try to do a similar technology because they roast it on very low temperature for eight hours. Up to eight hours. Imagine how many wood they spent yeah. on it. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, it's on it's on wood. It's roasted in a big uh, uh, wok uh, and like rolling all the time, like a cylinder. Like, uh, but uh, yeah. So, and this one, and they have more than twenty cultivars, and it's all ulun tea. So it's all ulun. For example, this is uh, for sure. So it's called Lao Fo Shou Cha. So it's a Fo Shou, it's a kind of Buddha. It's a, in the fruit, actually, the fruit tree, but there's also a tea. 
Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is, uh, it's possible I have a lot of this, but uh, it's just difficult to bring. Yeah, but this tea is very special. And it's actually, then I found it, I found it also accidental because I just traveled nearby in Chao Chao. And some people say to me, oh, Sergey, did you heard about Chao Chao? I say, never heard. And say, so go there and try. It's different and it's interesting. And they also have the same cultivars as we do here. And only a few hours drive and you have it. And just, uh, yeah, you can smell. Uh, when I tried for the first time, we just was with my friend and we decided, okay, this, this is a killer of Yancha and Trooper at once. Because it's also a little bit similar to, uh, yeah, to the uh, rock uluns or yancha, which we have uh, in uh, northern Fujian region, Wishan region, Wishan rock tea or Wishan yancha, Wi yancha, a lot of different names, Dahon Pao, like a brand name for it, yeah, but actually Dahon Pao does not exist in a tree or bush like Dahon Pao on a plant. It's a name, it's a common name for all the types in combined, and it's actually registered trademark, local trademark of Uishan region. But now Dahon Pao you can grow in South and Fujian and everywhere. It's, it's easy to do the same processing. So it's like uh, franchising something? Not only franchising, they do it illegally, but <laughs> <laughs> in Anxi province they do also <laughs> Dahon Pao and, and, and uh, you know, and uh, Jinjin Mai, yeah, but something. Uh, they do it in different regions. But yeah, this uh, Chao Cha tea, it's really, really strong. It's really strong. Oh, yeah. And it's really different from anything. And some coffee drinkers who want to switch from coffee to tea easily after one cup. Uh, sadly, we don't have it now in any amount. Everywhere it's finished. But I will bring this year more than 20 types of it. Hopefully also, yeah, we will have it. Uh, but uh, even here I have few samples. But this is uh, specialty. Specialty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like um, here in Germany, I used to, instead of tea houses, yeah. Okay. I just go to the coffee houses uh -huh. and just for the I know, atmosphere. Mm. So I used to drink coffee. Ah, yeah, so <laughs> this is an easy way to switch from coffee. Reminds me of kindergarten. Mm. Mm. Because I tried with matcha, but somehow. And they brew it this way. It's not, it's not even bitter, the, the, they how they brew. Because if you know how with chow draw tea tradition, how they brew the uh, Feng Huang tea. They take, take a small guy wine, put the leaves like that, like full guy wine, maybe 20 grams in small guy wine, or 15 grams in small guy wine, and they brew so it's like for one minute, well. sometimes even. Or, and, the, and sometimes, when I very first time arrived in Batianshan, Batianshan is a small village in Meijo County. Uh, I was there for the first time that, that it, actually I was one of the first foreigners to visit this small village. Because a guy on auto station, they just asked me, oh, Sergey, uh, uh, oh, what is your name, la la la. And uh, after a small talk, I say, you know, I work here 40 years and I never seen any foreigner here before. In Guangdong province, it's not like very remote province. You have Guangzhou, like the biggest uh, trade capital, but still in the north, there are some regions which is not very visited by foreigners. And, uh, and, and I, talk to some local guys and some kids there and and there was a school it was a very funny day we spent there just to walk around uh yeah and uh yeah and give me this beautiful vessel please yeah i will bring more uh, yeah it's actually a very good one uh yeah it's aged also it's around uh, 70 years old and uh yeah and they ask oh uh, it means like, uh, do you like uh, this uh, bitter tea? I said, yes, of course, I like bitter tea. I said, wow, uh, you, are, you are Chinese. And actually, a lot of people actually recognize me in China as a Xinjiang, right? which means like uh, uh, from Xinjiang, the Muslim region uh, of China. And uh, uh, the people from Xinjiang, uh, yeah, they a little bit also have a kudze, like a beard and also, I think just, 
and they're a little bit scared. The Southern Chinese are a little bit scared of them because they have different mentality, different culture. They are Buddhist and Taoist, and and uh, then they make this. And they, in the first question they ask, "Are you Nishi Xinjian?" I say, "I say, I 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 say, Russian China have very good relations and and any doesn't matter you are from Kazakhstan or Latvia or Ukraine or Belarus or Russia anyone they, for them is Russians uh, they don't uh, have a difference uh, yeah you see. so this is why yeah and uh, yeah and they easily just start uh, interacting with you because they just feel oh yeah you looks like you really really like like with Chinese style they brew it very strong stronger than than I do now maybe a few times stronger and uh, bring it from very, very small cups. A smaller, twice smaller than this. Yeah. Uh, special, yeah? <laughs> Something. It's very good in the morning, just, but not on the empty stomach. If someone wants to sweet more, or sweet? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we have more. Please, please. Uh, I think few, Maybe not too much, like five, ten. Yes. It was a good idea to bring it. Yeah. yeah. So now we have. Uh, it was a team number fifteen. I do believe that I freed. Yeah, you, it's enough. Maybe last last one for those who want to feel something special. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 it's good, it's good. <laughs> uh, if you have any plans for hiking, walking around, you can go to home without uh, cycling or traveling by metro or car, whatever, just... Actually, I have a very funny story, uh, I don't remember this city it was, but uh, the guys uh, just to walk uh, 21 kilometer just after the and, and he says what and, and also i have the same story in menhai i tried uh, 49 or 50 something types of shoe pour oh. during a day wow. it was during a day but it was a few factories and i tried like on each factory i tried more than 10 types and i had really like it was too much i never try never do it at home like now it's too much but sometimes it's okay like like for i want to it's my uh, holiday today. I first time in Berlin, first time in Germany, doing something like that. So, for me, it's a very good uh, intention to do something special. Yeah, and uh, so finally, I walked uh, from the factory uh, to the hotel, also like 12 or 13 kilometers, just to relax a little bit. <laughs> it it was the same not only yesterday but days before. It was also like 36. Crazy. It was Few days. 34. 34, yeah. 34 was a nice day, I guess, yeah. So we like it today. We have a good weather. Because yesterday, yeah, I was shocked. Uh, we just traveled from Amsterdam. In, in Amsterdam, it was pretty good. Uh, it's like 26, 25 something. And uh, after that, uh, when they entered Germany, we just stopped maybe in the middle of the road. And it, and it was 39. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell? Is it a Thailand or no, Germany? Germany. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> How it can be in Germany? <laughs> yeah, so the last tea for today will be something really special tea. <laughs> Even more, way more special than we tried before. Way more special. Really. I have this magic box. It's from my Taiwan friend who are actually a winner of competition, of my personal competition of uh, Asian uh, tea proper way and he have let's let's read 1938 Lao Oolong from Uishan yeah, so, it's, so it's a 19 so it's more than 100 years old of soon it will be 100 years old rock tea from Uishan aged 
and it's a little bit, uh, you will try a little and you will see how funny the taste can be because from first appearance it looks like shoopware almost but this is uh, yeah, it's something we now brew the cost of uh, rental cars for a week <laughs> yeah 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 so it's a good tea uh, it's my, uh, I only have this, uh, I have three boxes of it. Can and we smell Yeah, yeah, you can just uh, open up and even maybe better I put it here. A little bit. I, I don't know, I don't stay near the farmer who done this tea, you can believe it. It's really difficult to, <laughs> to check. But then I tried for the very first time the this taste, because I never before I tried something like that, and never after. Actually, hopefully, when I get back to Taiwan, and uh, luckily, uh, dear lady Pelosi left it. Uh, thank her for visiting. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think it's good, but still. And, uh, and we can travel to Taiwan again. I hopefully will bring some more tea from this guy because uh, he collects absolutely insane teas. He has like oolongs from 60s and 50s and uh, from very first appearance you can see that he just uh, like you know fake something whatever but as soon as you try it no questions after yeah. please do. And do you have like business in Taiwan? Yeah? Uh, we don't have, uh, yeah, yeah, of course I buy tea from there, mm. but I, I don't have my own something. But so it's not so stressful for you? Uh, not, it, it's stressful of course for anyone who relates. Yeah, 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 but it's like, uh, no extra stress because yeah. like, piece of your business. Yeah, 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 but I only worry about my friends farmers in yeah. Taiwan because it was like, yeah. it was stupid from both sides. I believe they just why to provoke China for nothing and why to react so aggressively against yeah. I'm not a politician, luckily. <laughs> this is Oolong. This was Oolong, but almost 90 years ago. And now you feel the almost like shoopware taste, but yeah. a little bit different. <laughs> This is also ein Blauschuh. Ja, definitiv. Aber der eben auch der geröstete, also der gefrittierte. Ja, frittiert. Gefrittiert, was denn denn? This guy, he actually won uh, also Taiwanese aged tea competition something. Uh, because he also have um, these uh, aged uh, green teas uh, from 70s or 60s, I don't believe, which type exactly because you have few and uh, and he was like number one uh, aged tea collection for a couple of years and now he became private so before he had like kind of a shop but now he only focused on and now how it is when it's no shop what now what he does now. He just, uh, how do you say, meet friends. No. If someone has his number, mm -hmm. you can visit him at home and he can sell you something. Mm -hmm. yeah, but what is the process for frying? But frying actually is my better call roasting. Yeah, but uh, for this chow chow, what we tried, it's, it's kind of roasted. Uh, but we call it fried, but roasted for eight hours. Uh, but, it, it, but still, it's actually if you take a wok and then just fry it like that all the time. Move the leaves. Don't make it. Uh, don't make it uh, fire it. Like uh, don't make it burn too much. Mm -hmm. But depending on the type of tea, it can be different. It can be different temperature. It can be different time. It can be different anything. And so it's really like. You know, um, difficult to be sure about like like some universal technology. But you can open in my book uh, the green tea sections and you see how it's regularly made. But for example, the easiest technological processing is for white and green tea. White tea mostly you just harvest 
put on the bamboo trays and forgot about it for three days and it's ready, it's just mm. rice. And in sometimes some, uh, you can make a little bit charcoal uh, hunbei or like uh, this baking uh, process for some type of baihao engine, YT, you can do that, but uh, uh, very low, like 50 something, maybe even less sometimes. And, uh, but so most of it is they didn't, don't use any temperature at all. Uh, yeah, this is why, this because it's no fixation, so it's all the time naturally fermenting, this is why the white tea is also a very good fit for aging. The same as, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the same as uh, any other tea actually, uh, but most fitting for aging teas is, uh, oh I forgot to, sorry, mm? <laughs> I forgot to put Anna into me, yeah, okay. Uh, so, at the same time, uh, but the green teas, uh, you just harvest a little bit withering, roast, roll, and dry. That's it. But with Ulun's you have 17 steps. <laughs> 17? 17. Uh, but if you count each time you roast it and break and, uh, and uh, roll and again roast and again roll and again, if you count all the steps it will be maybe 30 or up to 40 steps or even more. Uh, because because it's depending on the type of Ulun tea. But the most complicated uh, technology, it's a GABA tea uh, production. It's the most complicated because you also, yeah, you also need this chamber, also you need to do actually the same Oolong tea processing if you want to do it uh, similar to Oolong uh, processing type. And we have uh, actually in the book I have uh, this, uh, I can show, it's actually very interesting about how it's made. Um, Young and uh, yes, uh, by Maucha. Uh, it's no, it's not here. It's yeah, it's all in processing chowdro. Actually, I have very good explanation of how all in Guangdong province how it's processing. So, first the tea harvesting, after that, primary dithering, after that, tea dithering in uh, breaded sieves. Yeah, after that, uh, they have this fermenting, dotsing procedure yeah uh, also alternative uh, in Thailand we do this uh, this cooling uh, cooling uh, of tea after that the tea trays so they cover with the cloth and also kind of creating conditions for fermentation here and also after that uh, they have uh, two kind of stoves like electric wood stove which is good for roasting and also sometimes it's like woke uh, handmade uh, Rarely now is difficult to find this ro ro rotating drum and so it's like that. And after that, you have this twisting, like rolling machine. And uh, after that, you just continue the same process. And after that, uh, you yeah farming shelves uh, for a couple of time. After that, you're selecting. And after that, you can do again the final hunbei or baking. Uh, so it's also kind of difficult technology. But this is not so difficult as. Uh, Thailand, uh, Th Taiwanese uh, technology, uh, I think it's here, hopefully. No, 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 it's not here. It's uh, HRT processing, actually, it's also very interesting, but yeah, this is Taiwan. Taiwan, 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 it's here, yeah. So this is Thailand, Ulung processing. And in this GABA, so we have the same. Uh, we have a lot of steps. First, after harvesting this outdoor dithering, after that, indoor dithering, uh, with steaming and humidity supply and cooling down. After that, dithering uh, and ready for shaking in uh, these uh, bamboo trays. After that, kind of shaking, yeah, some yao ching. And after that, uh, chao ching, the fixation. And after that, uh, you yes, you make a fixation process and rolling different types. Sometimes it's like compressing to cubes, sometimes it's like in this way. So, and you continue these steps for a few times and after that you put it in altitude chamber for eight hours and depends of, of uh, technology and after that this mao cha or ban champin or semi product is ready and uh, you make a, a kind of uh, roasting yeah so not roasting but actually uh, how to say oven drying or something yeah after that you select it uh, yeah, it, there's also a machine which cut uh, 
the Chao Gaoji machine for steam chopping. Yeah, and after that, uh, there are also process of uh, uh, the roasting for some types. <laughs> so it's really complicated technology, especially for GABA. Mm -hmm. so before, before the technology was done by hand? Yeah, not this one, but most of the... Yeah, actually it was a little bit different because there was no possibility to make amber chamber, for example. <laughs> yeah, so it's... It's in to, to, together with translation, maybe almost ten years, like oh, really? eight eight years something. And now I'm working on the second book. Uh, it will be called the, like Tea Culture, uh, and it belongs. Uh, there is a, like mostly focused on ceramic and consumption oh. of tea, and uh, how do we process? Uh, yeah, it's the last one. Yeah, we just finished. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, yeah. So it, like, oh. so it will be about, because this is about geography and this is about the tea processing and technology. And also a little bit is history and also like tea science and cultivation and but not too much. But the second one will be focused on the tea consumption, tea culture itself. Because it's really disconnected uh, with the processing and most of the farmers they don't have a tea pots. They have like French press or glass or really? <laughs> most of, of course. They don't care too much about uh, uh, the, how to say, the culture itself. But uh, now more and more, of course, uh, they start in. And uh, there are some very clever companies who also do like uh, agriculture, like uh, tourism uh, with tea, and they have uh, hotels, and of course so they have uh, tea houses on the plantations, and they have, ho they have anything. And it is very good. Even in Taiwan, in Thailand, in China, all have this. And Japan, of course. And they more and more, uh, how to say, uh, understand that they must uh, not only just produce the material for some brand, but they also need to become a brand and need to bring their own something into the culture contributed. And so more and more it's common for China and other countries. But still, the, of course, the 90% of farmers, they just do tea, nothing else, nothing else. Sometimes they have kai wine. To try the tea. <laughs> most time they have glass, right? Yeah, uh, well, depend de depend depend on the place because yeah. in Anhui province, for example, they mostly use glass for green tea. Especially we try it, and if we go to a Chinese market, they have this only. And uh, of course, uh, the most of good tea actually regularly it's pre-ordered, mm. and they don't uh, need to bring it to market. Mostly on the market, mostly not all the time, but mostly on the market is the tea like which not needed for order or some so it's for farmers is a, some farmers do specially for markets but mostly they prefer to find some good company which you work with and just supply them like i most of my farmers i work with up to 100 percent what they do they do for me only up to Depends. Uh, some do a lot of different. So it's small uh, businesses. It's mostly small, mostly small. But we have some big companies also as a uh, uh, big contributors. But even uh, like Shoopware, for example, we sell in really big amounts, like few containers a year. And uh, this, uh, even a big factory can make have maybe half of we do only for us, half of production, uh, because it's a big amounts. So for example, we now order it a bunch, like seven tons of Shoopware from one factory. And it's uh, really very c common and very cheap tea, so people love it and order it a lot. Yeah. So seven tons of yeah. a year. Yeah, I mean, it's no, no, no. It's not for a year. It's like for a few months only. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's much yeah. more. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, of course. Uh, actually, poor is poor in GABA. It's most uh, if you talk about ex-Soviet Union countries, the most consumpted. Uh, here in Amsterdam, we have very different range. Also, GABA is very popular, and also green tea and matcha and uh, anything. But because we have much less Japanese tea, which you have here, for example, we mostly have all our Georgian, Thailand, Taiwan, China tea. Uh, so people just drink what we offer because mostly, or our regulars now, it's, it's the people who we just learn from zero level in knowledge about tea. So. Uh, but what I like here, for example, 
uh, in Netherlands, like I never expected so big attention. So a lot of people, after the first two visits, they just really became involved in the culture and start uh, developing their own tastes and asking more about different types yes. and varieties and how yeah, to. Like here, I can I haven't researched why, but somehow in Germany, like tea culture is on zero level. So it's like. But not on the, on the same zero like in Netherlands, because actually in, in Amsterdam we may be <laughs> one of two or three shops in all Amsterdam. And maybe if you count all Netherlands, maybe like, okay, ten shops which have good tea, no more. Uh, comparing to, to Germany, it's way less. And, but what we see even for online, for example, each second order is from Germany. Each second order from Germany, because so here's a really developed Comparing to China is nothing, but comparing to other countries, I believe Germany may be number f number one in Europe. Mm. At least you have no Czech Republic. Czech Republic okay. maybe more, but because Germany is bigger and ah, I mean, yeah, like, in the amount of people. But if we could and, count like per person, yeah, 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 hundred persons, how many are interested? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. The Czech Republic. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Ah, ah, in two weeks. And they like have tea houses. And wow. Dark. Yeah. Good. Prague is a uh, very good country. Prague is very good. Yeah. Prague is great. I mean, yeah. it's... go from one tea house to another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wow. This we will need to visit here. definitely wow. because I never was there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 like really great. And also like how they design the rooms. Mm -hmm. And uh, this year it will also be a business event on the 19th. So there will be a networking event. Ah, Last in year, August. Yeah. In August. Oh. Festival, and uh, because I'm a little bit behind the organization, oh. that's right. Maybe next year I will definitely join because this year sadly I already have plans. Every year. Every year. Oh, at least for us, for, for us already good to we will be here. So, this is the last steep of this beautiful tea. Thank you very much for coming. For me, it's very like uh, you know. Very enjoy uh, to meet all of you, and uh, actually, it's my big passion to serve the tea. It's a one. Uh, it's a bigger passion than doing business, you know. It's still, and I like it. So hopefully, it will not the last time. We will do again more and more, and uh, hopefully, we'll meet in October on a tea festival here because I will came, and I also do some sessions. So we will look how it. Yeah, maybe for more crowded audience, but I will prepare more tea and something like. Yeah, so for me it's a big passion and really thank you very much and thank to see space for providing such a beautiful place with so beautiful character wall here. Yeah, so see you again, hopefully, maybe in Amsterdam. I will be back there and now I'm leaving for a month, but I will be back uh, in the middle of uh, September. Again, it will be from middle of September till middle of October, we'll be in Europe also traveling. I have to have back to Thailand and to a lot of travels <laughs> as usual. Yeah, all the way, all the time. It's like all the time.